Well, what is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. It's really nice to have you here today. I've got something on the table that came to me by way of Dirk Warning. I will put a link in the description to his, what, his YouTube channel. Please check him out. Uh, Dirk and I have been friends now for a while, and his taste in knives and mine are similar, but the way that we go about it is very different, um, mostly because he has, like, I collect knives. He has a knife collection. And what I mean by that is that his stuff is super high-end and monster and beautiful. My stuff tends to be more working class. Um, but, God, this thing is fantastic. This is the ZT-0600. From a time when ZT was absolutely fearless. <laughs> this thing is an absolute brute. It's an R.J. Martin design. And I am in love with it. Uh, you gotta like R.J. Martin design to love this knife, and I do. I mean, this thing is huge. <clears throat> I have some classic ZT. I made a whole video sort of begging ZT to go back to making big, overbuilt monster knives. And they have completely ignored me. Uh, mostly because I'm a no one, and why would they listen to me in the first place? But I tried. Um, this is phenomenal. <laughs> Just absolutely outrageous. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the O300. One of their absolute classics. I have a, at this point, modified O560 that I absolutely love. I put a different, I put a carbon fiber scale on it, put some titanium screws in there. Um, ZT used to work with directly with what were at the time and still are for many reasons, big names in the design industry. Um, this is a hinderer design. This is a Ken Onion design. This is an RJ Martin design. I never thought I would hold a standard flipper from ZT that would make the 0560 look small, but here you go. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. This is what got me seriously hooked on collecting knives in the first place. I mean, we live in a world where, uh, and you know, no offense, well, maybe some, where this is what sells. Everybody raves about little tiny knives, and hey, good, fantastic. Um, my collection, which basically has stalled, is the old Kaiser stuff that weighed a ton, made out of uh, titanium and S35VN. It's the old ZT stuff. It's big, fearless knives that are as much about the design as they are about marketing potential. And we just don't live in that space that well anymore. You know, the few companies that are still doing it, the prices have gotten so high that it's just ridiculous. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to find one of these. Um, they were only about 300 bucks when they released. This is 10 years ago, 11 years ago now. Um, but now, if you wanted to go hunt one of these up on eBay, you'd be paying, well, a lot. But it's the same is true for these. What does that say? If the old stuff the big stuff, the cool stuff, is absolutely pulling premium dollars. It says the market exists for this. You know, instead of that. Don't get me wrong, this is a perfectly excellent little knife, but... Oh, whatever. Anyway, let's talk about the O600. As I said, this is from a time when ZT was essentially fearless. Uh, producing, this is a factory version of an R.J. Martin Custom. It is carbon fiber and titanium. Look at this design back here. It's got a fantastic lanyard space back there that doesn't interfere. It's got a big milled uh, titanium pocket clip. The blade steel is interesting. It is B75P or CTS B75P. It is a tool steel uh, that I had to absolutely go look up because I'd never heard of it. Uh, it gets good reviews. It was just sort of a moment when they were making knives 
like this out of interesting blade steels. Look at the milling on this handle. I mean, come on. This is gorgeous. Now, when I opened this, I said, you got to like R.J. Martin Designs to like this knife. He's a huge fan of recurve, um, you know, whatever. I'm not averse to it. I think it serves a purpose and has a place. I don't prefer recurve on my daily carries, but come on, look at this thing. All right, let's get some specs out of the way on this monster. I will hunt up a price for this off of eBay or something and put it in the description so you guys can know. I have no idea, but anyway. Uh, all right, you are looking at four full inches of cutting on four and a quarter inches of B75P tool steel. The grip area <laughs> is four and three quarters. I have big hands. Look how much knife there is sticking out the back of this thing. Overall, from tip to tail, line it up here, because that's eight inches. You are looking at nine and a half inches of knife. Closed length, five and a quarter inches. One, two, three, four, five and a quarter inches. And yet, unlike the O300, which is an absolute monster in the pocket. Now, mind you, it's got a monster flipper on it, but we'll talk about that in a second. You're looking at an inch and uh, inch and a half of space this way. If you add in that flipper, you're looking at an inch and three quarters overall. But still, for a nine inch knife, oh, that flips so good. <laughs> uh, you can flip the pocket clip. There's spaces over here if you wanted to carry this lefty. Now, of course, it's a frame lock. It's got a steel lock bar insert, which, by the way, a lot of high-end knives from you know, 10, 12 years ago still weren't doing that. So that's a really nice feature. Uh, by way of example, my 0560 from a few years before this uh, does not. It just has carbonized titanium up against the steel, which means over time, this lock bar moves ever farther in on the steel because steel is harder than titanium. These wear out in a way that this will not. I'm so comfortable. I have spent the last few videos, um, if you've watched, hope you have, uh, sort of ranting about how much I love a neutral handle shape and this thing is, it's a, it, it's perfect in hand. Um, it is one, two, three, four, almost five millimeters of this B75P. I mean, <laughs> it is... Yeah, it's almost a quarter inch. I mean, it is considerably thicker than the steel on the 0560 and thicker than the steel on the 0300. God, this thing is a monster. Dear ZT, you know what though? Right now, uh, Benchmade, for instance, is absolutely killing its fan base with the price of their knives. And that's because everything is more expensive. Materials, time, all of it. I want ZT to make this knife, but I have to tell you, I don't think I'd enjoy the price they'd charge for it anymore. I mean, this was 300 and something dollars 12 years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. It would absolutely be a $600 knife from ZT now. But you know what? They cost more than that on the secondary, and people are buying them. So obviously there's a market for it. Just saying. I am really grateful to Dirk for sending this along. I'm a little mad at him, too, because um, like many of his absolute beast knives, uh, there's no way I'm ever going to own one of these. But what a fantastic opportunity to get to check it out. Look at the milling on the inside of the... The cutaway here. Can you see that at all? Yeah, there's milling here. There's a little bit of milling 
here it's got a little bit of texture. Everything about this knife is thoughtful and excellent. By way of example, just so we do that, here it is against a PM2. <laughs> it absolutely dwarfs the PM2. Here it is against a full-size grip. Again, just dwarfs it. And just for shits and giggles, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Here it is against a, um, a bug out. I want to share with you that you can, you know, it fits in the handle. I mean, if we line the, you get an over an inch of knife. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's really not that thick. Let's see. Through the handle, I mean, it's, where are we at? It is six tenths of an inch through the handle, so it's a little, you know, this way. Three quarters. Oh my god, this thing is fantastic. Anyway, I'm heartbroken because I'm going to have to put this in a box now and send it back to its owner. <laughs> That's okay. This is the ZT-0600. Part of a long line of just stellar, fearlessly designed Knives from ZT, from designers that were absolutely leading the field at the time. And I would love to see them at least come back towards this. Right? Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been the ZT 0600. I am incredibly jealous of Dirk right now. Thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, again, I'll put a link to Dirk's YouTube channel in the description. Uh, most of my followers follow him anyway, but if you haven't, please do so. Thank you so much for your time today. We'll see you next time.